Welcome everybody, I'm Elodie Beels, urologist at the University Hospital of Leuven in Belgium, and I will talk about the results in our Center of Robotic Urethral Reimplantation for Distal and mid Pathology in Adults. Evolution from open to minimally invasive surgery is in large part due to the development of robotics. Although the most frequent surgical approach for treatment of distal ureter pathologies is still open surgery, minimally invasive surgery has become an option offering comparable advantages. The aims of our study are to describe our different surgical techniques and to present our single institution outcomes. With approval from the ethical committee, we created a retrospective database that included patients who underwent a robotic assisted ureter reimplantation from 2016 to 2018. We excluded pediatric patients and open and conventional laparoscopy approaches. Preoperative clinical assessment included evaluation of symptoms, a CT scan and renal function parameters. Patients with reflux underwent a technetium DMSA scan and a cystography. Surgery was indicated depending on symptoms, poor or insufficient response after endoscopic treatment, underlining pathology, evidence of obstruction and deterioration of renal function. Follow-up included evaluation of symptoms and cystography after two weeks, an abdominal ultrasound and urinalysis after four weeks and abdominal ultrasound after three and 12 months. Patients with upper tract TCC underwent cystoscopy and a CT scan at three and six months. The surgical technique depended on the underlying pathology and location of the injury. All the procedures were performed with the Da Vinci XI robot in a forearm configuration. Intravesical reimplantation was always associated with psoas hitch for a distal urethral injury. For injuries proximal to the crossing of the iliac vessels, IVR and Boari flip were performed. Extravesical urethral reimplantation was performed according to the Lisch Grégoire technique for reflux. Overall, 31 patients underwent a robotic assisted urethral reimplantation, and 67.7% of the patients were symptomatic. Lumbar pain was the most frequent symptom. 23 patients underwent an IVR with psoas hitch, and IVR with Boari flap and EVR were performed in four patients each. There were 20 non iatrogenic and 11 iatrogenic injuries. The origin of the urethral injury was in most cases benign, and the most frequent benign finding was fibrosis. Five patients had reflux, and two patients had urethral stenosis caused by endometriosis. An oncological origin was found in five patients, and the most frequent cause was distal urethral transitional cell carcinoma. All iatrogenic urethral pathologies were secondary to gynecological surgeries. There were no conversions and no intraoperative complications. The overall postoperative complication rate was 29% and mostly clavendindo 1, pain and hematuria. At median follow-up of 15 months, the median success rate was 90.3%. There were three recurrences and all of them after IVR and all due to tumor recurrence of their primary oncological disease. If we exclude the oncological cases, the success rate at median follow-up was 100%. In our knowledge, this is one of the largest series of robotic-assisted urethral reimplantation that includes benign and malignant pathology with a success rate of 90%. But there are limitations. The retrospective nature of the study may limit the veracity of the results, and also long-term outcomes have yet to be established. The heterogeneity of the population is also a limitation, although the purpose is to describe our experience. And we did not compare our results with other approaches such as open surgery or laparoscopy. So as concluding messages, robotic assisted urethral reimplantation for the treatment of mid and distal ureter pathology is feasible, safe and capable of offering excellent short and medium term outcomes. At our institution, the robotic approach has completely replaced the open approach in non-urgent procedures. But long-term clinical and radiological follow-up is needed 
to confirm long-term recurrence rates and functional outcomes. Thank you for listening.